Hello, and welcome to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. Gotta spice up these uh, intros, get a little boring sometimes. Alright, so today we are checking out a uh, another newish song from Uneven Structure. Um, I don't know how old the band is. I should probably look into that stuff. Um, Nick S. and Matt H. have requested Uneven Structure. Um, Matt requested Frost Hail, and Nick uh, requested Outlaw, uh, but it was uh, not in the comment section. It was in one of the uh, community text posts. Um, said that Uneven Structure was actually contacting reactors to check out Outlaw, and I figure since it's one of their newer songs, we're going to go ahead with that one. Uh, this one came out August 22nd of last year. And the album came out October of last year. So, uh, yeah, this, this album's only five months old. So let's see, again, let's see what, let's, let's see what modern music is bringing us. We've been doing a lot of modern stuff. Let's, uh, let's keep the train rolling. First thing I'm going to point out, though, just like I pointed out with the uh, Polyphia OD video, I really enjoy their decision to use the, the wider aspect ratio i don't know what it is about it. i don't know if it's just because it looks more cinematic and i have a bias towards that um i don't know i just really like uh the the wider 2.3 to 1 rather than the 1.8 to 1 that most people tend to use i don't know let's get to it Yeah, I can't. I can't count this. It keeps changing so often. It's uh, it's like seven one bar and then six the next bar. I, I'm just gonna stop trying. I'm just gonna jam with it. That almost sounded like a two bar just to break it up. I'm gonna two beat. So this is a very right-brained song, much like uh, Meshuggah stuff. Oh, <laughs> nah, they had me. I thought the song was over. I actually really like this part a lot more than uh, the first part that came in.
it was holding on to this tension like they could release it at any moment and it'd be okay they just want to really push it as far as they can I appreciate that I do you gotta let the song breathe because it's been heavy so far I love this more melodic approach That's some really good, it's, it's octave based uh, harmony, but it's, uh, it's falsetto. And it's not really something I'd expect from a guy of his look. I mean, he, I mean, he's got that real deep growl. Even his cleans are a bit more than I would have expected. But uh, it's really nice to hear him throw down some falsetto like that. Yeah. I really, I, uh, I, the song needs. I'll, I'll touch on that later. I'll touch on that later. I love the drums here, how they're really, they're playing a different phrasing over the 4-4, and it really feels like they're dragging behind the rest of the bands. Alright, that was a bit abrupt. Alright, so there is a... I got really mixed feelings about this. And uh, some of it pertains to the song and some of it doesn't. We're going to get into this bit by bit. Um, I really love the way that they play with time. Uh, there was a bit when they came back to the verse... And I counted it out, I and mean, I didn't, uh, I didn't try to count, you know, specific phrasing and trying to find where the phrase ends. I just started counting, uh, and I found that I got to sixteen, and I found another downbeat. And I wondered if I didn't really have time to do it because I caught it at the end of the section. But I wonder if uh, the song is actually in four four. They're just playing different polyrhythms against that. Uh, and that it's, if you turn it into, uh, if you take it at 4-4 four, four, and you look at it in four bar phrasing, that you're going to end up with whatever they're doing. And it's actually a four bar phrase in 4-4 four, four, just with different accented beats that make it sound like it's not 4-4. Four, four. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if that's what was going on, but I don't have a lot of evidence to back that up. Like I said, I only caught it one time at the end of uh, the second verse. So it could have just been uh, poor counting on my part. But it would uh, make sense with the fact that I felt a two-beat bar, two bar um, in one of the phrasings, which would make sense as it, they try to line it back up with the four-bar phrase. So uh, that's, uh, that's not something unusual. Um, I'd, I'd really like to see 
the sheet music for this and to see how it was written and uh, what time signatures they were using. It jumps around so much, the phrasing does. You'll have like a seven beat phrase and then like a five beat phrase and then a two beat free phrase and then we move back into like a four or five or something. It's all over the place and uh, it actually makes a lot more sense musically to have a static time signature and to just phrase them in different uh, beat segments where it all still comes together at the end of four or six or eight bars or whatever in a single time signature. But, uh, you know, given that, if they are using a single time signature and just kind of playing with the time feel within it, expert stuff. If they're using multiple time signatures, again, that's still expert stuff. That's, that's just ridiculously crazy to balance all that, especially if they're counting it in that and they don't have like a 16 bar phrase that they're just playing around with it's a lot more difficult to count uh and to play properly every time i mean once once you play enough you kind of get into that thing where you're playing more on muscle than counting but i mean still you got to practice it and and it's not it's not easy to practice that um i i really love the vocalist i'm not a big fan of his growls and his screams. He does have a lot of range there. He showcased a couple of different um, harsh vocals. And I, I love that he doesn't just stick with one. He kind of goes through it all and kind of puts uh, uh, different emotive spins on different aspects of the song. But I love his cleans. And I know that I, I, I would never wish for to, for him to sing completely with cleans it's the juxtaposition that really makes his cleans shine when they're sung against the the rough harsh vocals um but i definitely have a preference um especially when he pulls that falsetto out in uh the bridge i think it was to give octave harmonies over his his uh head singing it's just really really gorgeous he can pull out some really beautiful stuff even though he's just got this real aggressive growl uh as well in his repertoire just that just a really all-around great singer i would love to see uh you know just more styles from him i think he can do a lot of stuff and i'd like to see uh what he can bring to the table uh Everything else was mostly serviceable. Um, there was a little bit of a guitar solo that I enjoyed, um, but for the most part, it was very right brain uh, compositional work where, you know, we have a seven bar phrase, a five bar phrase, a four bar phrase, but we have this core idea. Um, and we just need to find different ways to adapt that to longer or shorter phrasing. Um, let me see. I'm, I'm going to try something new today. I'm going to pull up the verse and I'm going to point this out specifically. Uh, gotta wait for my headphones to kick on. So you have this idea of low notes and then high notes and they're they're pretty much always the same you have and you're basically have this one idea and you're adapting it to the phrasing you're not actually writing new music that would fit uh the different time signatures or the different phrasing lengths uh that you're wanting to do to to make this strange uh disjointed time feel you're taking one idea and modifying it to suit the needs of however length of phrasing you need for that part. Um, and because of that, the music ends up being, it's repetitive in a chaotic kind of way. You know what's going to happen, you just don't know how it's going to happen. Um, so it keeps you on your toes, it sounds refreshing, it sounds like it's always changing but it actually isn't and once you kind of key in and realize that it's the same thing over and over just with you know the the low notes played twice or the low notes played once or the high note is held out for an extra beat uh it it isn't that uh it loses kind of some of its well it loses some of its interest and unfortunately that's kind of the way that they wrote a lot of the parts in the song is to take a core idea 
and uh, kind of warp it around and make minor changes to it instead of actually writing different parts. The, uh, the middle section was actually, uh, I, I said it was my favorite. Um, and I think that's because it took a very, it took a more melodic left brain approach to writing the music, having more emotiveness to it and sort of a melodic uh, element creating an, a musical story. And I really appreciate that. I'm sure this music is going to appeal to a lot of people who like that kind of right brain type of music, the people who are into um, Sugar. This is a, a, a more melodic idea of that same approach. Um, and it's just, it's not what I prefer to listen to. I, I can really appreciate the technicality that goes into it. Um, you know, the, the training that goes into practicing and, and being able to perform this and especially coming up with these kind of ideas and just kind of the controlled chaos in the time feel. It's definitely not something that is, is easy to do. It's not something easy to come up with. It's not simple in any way. Uh, it just isn't my cup of tea though I do appreciate it for what it is. Um, but I think one thing that might have colored my appreciation for the track is, unfortunately, the music video, I just did not... Uh, it's not a... I, this isn't normally something I talk about, but usually the music video doesn't detract from my experience in any way. Um, I enjoyed seeing the drums and the guitars and the singer. I think it all added a little bit. Um, kind of being able to see how things were being performed, but the rest of the music video just did not jive with me. I, I felt a little too gratuitous, and uh, it it kind of painted my uh, first impression of the song uh, a little more negatively than if I had just listened to the music itself. Unfortunately, um, I'm trying my best to separate the two. Uh, I just don't. I I, I checked over at the lyrics. Um, near the end of the song when they were doing the closing um, chorus and I was re going through the lyrics just trying to see if maybe the music video had something to do with the lyrics going on and maybe but also it, the connections that I'm making are, are quite flimsy and I just I feel like the music video was gratuitous for gratuitous sake not that there's anything wrong with that it's just again not not something I prefer. I, I think that art should complement itself. Um, and I, I'm not really making a strong connection between the need for the music video itself uh, going with the music. But like I said, I'm trying my best to separate them. I enjoyed the music and I'm trying not to let the video kind of taint that. I am interested to see some other stuff that Uneven Structure has done. And uh, I want to thank, uh, let me bring this back up, uh, Nick and Matt for requesting this. I am probably going to check, check out Frost Hail next time. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that uh, that one has a, a music video that kind of fits better with the music. But again, that has nothing to do with the music. Uh, on the musical side, I, I'm very impressed with what they did. And, uh, you know, how they went about creating that, even if I'm not the biggest fan of that style of music. So what did you all think of Uneven Structure? I believe Nick and Matt, I hope I'm remembering, remembering that. Uh, yeah, Nick and Matt, I'm pretty sure they're the only ones who requested it. There were four or five requests from each of them for this band. Um, so either other people are wanting or, you know, have, have requests higher up on their list, or this is more of an unknown band. So, uh, you know, what do, what do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comments. Uh, you know, if there's some other songs that you know about from them, go ahead and let me know about them. Like I said, the only other request is Frost Hail. So that's, that's definitely in the list uh, for when I revisit them. But I always like having a, a plethora of options to choose from. It's always nice to uh, have options. Um, and while you're down there, make sure you like, subscribe, and uh, ring the bell. And I will be back tomorrow, Friday, for the final episode of Critical Reactions this week. And we are doing a big one. 
I get a lot of requests for this band, and I think y'all are going to be very excited to uh, to see me finally finally tackling this one. All right, so uh, yep, yeah, tomorrow 11 a.m. as usual, and until then, y'all have a fantastic day.